Hello students, today we are going to study the chapter Silk Road from our book Hornbill. This story is written by Nick Middleton. Actually this is an autobiography of Nick Middleton. This chapter is about the narrator's journey from slopes of Rao to Mount Kailas to complete the Kora. To bid him farewell, Lahamo gave him a long sleeve sheepskin coat. He hired Saturn cars for his journey and took Daniel along to escort him to the Darange. As the protagonist was heading towards Mount Kailas to complete the Kora, in the morning he witnessed a beautiful half moon in the blue sky. The clouds looked like French breed which glowed pink because of the sun which spread a slash of rays on the mountain tops. It looks like a rose tinted blush. Rao and Lahamo wanted to give him a farewell gift. One evening when the protagonist passed a message to Lahamo through Daniel, she gave him a long sleeved sheepskin coat which is meant for men. Satan looked at him attentively while he climbed into his car. He declared yes and said Darokba to him which means Kora in the region of Tibbet. Kora ye meditation hai jo Buddhist believers or Buddhist followers jo hote hain wo isko perform karte hain and Darokba jo hota hai wo shepherds ko kaha jata hai us area mein. They took a shortcut to cut off the Changtung, his driver knew the short route which took them to the southwest towards Mount Kailas. They had to pass high mountain passes. Satan told him that they can reach the destination only if there is no snow and they can't know that until they, uh, they will reach there. The route was filled with open plains in Ravu where gazelles were eating grass from the land which had little rain and disapproved while hopping back in the void. As they moved forward, a large group of wild asses appeared. Satan told him that they were approaching the wild asses long before they appeared there, Satan pointed out a huge pile of dust which he called Kyang in his local language. When they drew nearer to the destination, they could see a large group of animals progressing in a fast and uncontrollable uncontro manner like they were doing military exercise trails of dust filled with air. As they moved past the rocky area, they came across private koras, nurturing their group of birds, both men and women, stared at their car and some also waved at them. As they moved closer to the animals, the sheep would take a slippery path and would suddenly move into another direction away from the car. They witnessed nomads' tents, which were dark in complete isolation, and a big black Tibetan dog standing as their guard. They fixed their gaze on the approaching car and ran behind it as a bullet fired from a gun. Those bushy creatures were blacker than the normal black color who wore a bright red color and they barked angrily at them with big jaws. Those dogs were fearless and were running towards the car causing Satan to apply brakes and change direction suddenly. The dogs ran after them for a hundred meters more and then stopped to watch them go away. These Tibetan mastiffs became popular in China's royal courts as hunting dogs. 
they were brought along the silk route as tribute in ancient times from Tibet. As they passed the area with bushy Tibetan dogs, they started witnessing snow-capped mountains. They entered the valley which was covered with wide river covered with ice which was white and shiny in the sun. The track was moving along the river bank as they gained height and the valley was closing in towards them. The driver was driving in third gear while the turns were sharper and the ride got bumpier. Then they moved away from the road which ran along the icy river. It had sharp slopes and big rocks coated with thick sticky orange lichens. Below the rock were chunks of snow. The protagonist felt a pressure on his ears. He held his nose and snorted in order to clear them. A sharp turn came again and Setun stopped the car and jumped out from his seat. David too did the same. He exclaimed snow in his excitement. A long track of snow was in front of them which was about 15 meters long before it diminished and the normal dirty track appeared again. The snow was on both sides of them and it was difficult to move the vehicle in that condition. The protagonist joined Daniel as Satan tried to move smoothly over the snowy surface by stamping his foot on the surface. The protagonist saw his wristwatch. They were 5,210 meters above sea level. The snow was deep beneath its icy top surface. Daniel said that if they turned their car over, they could slip off. Satan grabbed dirt and threw it across the frozen surface. They pieced in and helped Satan until the snow with soil appeared and it loaded the tension of Satan. He drove back the car and slowly drove to the more comfortable side of the road. After 10 minutes, Satan stopped again as another obstacle came in front of them. They drove around the snowy track which was steep and filled with rocks. He further drove from the hairpin bend, moving on the higher side where the snow was still there. The protagonist checked his watch again while he was climbing the mountain in the bright sunlight. They moved up to 5400 meters height and his head began to pulsate again. He had a few sips of water from his bottle which helped him to climb the slope. They reached at 5515 meters and a large pile of stone was decorated with white silk scarves and some dirty prayer flags. They took a turn round the stone in a clockwise direction as in the tradition and the driver checked the tire of his vehicle. He stopped at the petrol tank and unscrewed its top which made a loud hiss noise as the pressure was making the fuel expand, the driver told him maybe it's dangerous but told him not to smoke around there. His headache cleared as they descended down the slope. It was 2 o'clock when they stopped for lunch at a long canvas tent beside the dirty salt lake. 
they had hot noodles the plateau was disfigured and the lake was filled with salty water and thatched roof covered with snow it had traces of extinct tethasi ocean which used to border tibet before the collision of the continent few men were walking there with pickaxes and slopes they were wearing sunglasses to minimize the glare coming from blue trucks loaded with pile of salt salt encrusted boots and long sheep skin coats by the late afternoon they reached hor town and back to the east west highway which was an old route from lahasa to kashmir daniel found a ride as he was on his way back to lahasa both of them bid him farewell at tire repair shop their car suffered two punctures on the way from the salt lake so satan was eager to get them fixed they had no spare tire left and the second tire which was which he changed was replaced by a smooth tire just like the head of the protagonist hor was an ugly and miserable place which had no vegetation and just dust and rocks it is scattered with gathered refuse and it was luckless that it was on the shore of lake mansarovar which is tibet's most respected water according to ancient hindu and buddhist cosmologist it consists of four indian rivers the indus the gangas the satluj and the brahmaputra satluj river flow from this lake and other three rivers rise near the side of mount kailas they were in a remarkable distance and he was eager to build ahead he waited for satan while having some tea at hoss cafe which was constructed badly from painted concrete and three broken window although it had a good view of the lake the protagonist was served by a chinese who was wearing a military uniform he spread the grease around his table with a dirt cloth and brought him a glass and a thermos of tea satan freed him from his private detention and they started their journey ahead passing more rocks and rubbish the protagonist's experience was opposite from what he read on travelers first encounters of the town ekai kwaguchi was a japanese monk who arrived in the town in 1900 he was so moved with the purity of the lake that he cried after a few years similar effect was on sven hedin a swedish who didn't have such an emotional outburst when they resumed their journey from hor it was dark at the time after 10:30 pm they decided to stay in a guest house in darchin which turned out to be a difficult night for him the rubbish dump in hor made his cold worse and herbal tea also didn't help him one of his nostrils was blocked as he lay on the bed he wasn't getting sufficient oxygen and he checked his watch he was at 4760 meters above the sea level the height was not more than rahu but he would be out of breath several times a night he was so familiar to these night time disturbances and he was scared this time he started breathing from his mouth he was tired and hungry he switched back to breathing from single nostril and as soon as he was about to sleep he would wake up shortly 
he was not feeling well as his chest felt heavy he set up and it cleared his nasal passages he was curious he tried again by laying back on the bed the same thing happened he was in the land of signals where something told him not to do it he wasn't able to go to sleep this time when he was sitting up it made him feel better as he could breathe properly and his chest felt light the opposite happened as soon as he laid down he held himself up against the wall but he wasn't able to relax he was afraid to sleep now a voice inside him told him that he might die if he would try to sleep so he stayed awake all the night so yahan jo मिडल्टन हैं उनको सांस लेने में दिक्कत हो रही है और वो जब भी सोते हैं तो उनको लगता है कि सांस नहीं ले पा रहे हैं ब्रीदिंग बंद हो जाती है सो वो पूरी रात सो नहीं पाते हैं और पूरी रात बैठ के ऐसे ही उनको रहना पड़ता है सेतन टू खीम टू डेट्स इन मेडिकल कॉलेज द नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग इट वॉज न्यू एंड लुक लाइक अ मोनेस्ट्री विथ डोर विच लीड टू अ लार्ज कोर्ट यार्ड दे वेन टू अ डार्क एंड कोल्ड consulting room filled by a tibetan doctor who wore nothing kind if random articles which he expected he was wearing a thick pullover and a woolly hat he asked him a few questions while filling his veins he told the driver that it is cold and he had an effect due to cold and altitude change he gave him some medicine and reassured him that he will be able to do the kora the tibetan doctor gave him a 5 day course he came out with a brown envelope which had 15 screws of paper after having breakfast he opened the after breakfast package which had a brown powder which he had to take with hot water it tasted like cinnamon and the lunch time and bed time packages were nearly the same they looked like sheep dung both had a small spherical brown packages after taking the full day medicine he slept peacefully that night setun left him in darchen when he came to know that he is going to be fine he told him as a buddhist that if he had passed away it would not matter but it would be bad for business next day darchen wasn't looking so bad it was dusty partially ruined and had loads of rubble and refuse everywhere the brightly shining sun in the blue sky gave him the vision of himalayas Gurula Mandhata he was able to see a little bit with cloud suspended over it Darchan had some basic general stores selling chinese soap cigarettes and strings of prayer flags every afternoon men would gather for a game of pool they would sit around a shabby table looking strange in the open air while women washed their hair in iced water of a small stream which flowed all the way to his guest house darchen had no pilgrims which were a setback for him he was told that in the peak season of pilgrimages in this town was filled with visitors some brought their own accommodation such as tents which was set up in the plains he felt that he had arrived at that place way too early one day while he was thinking about his options having while having a glass of tea at durchens only cafe he could concluded that there are limited options for him as he made little progress on the self help program on positive thinking he was having difficulty in sleeping which made hadn't made it easy for him 
he had no option other than to wait until the peak season of pilgrimage the trail was much frequented by the travelers he could do kora alone but it was a seasonal season session because of the route blockaged by snow he had no idea if the snow was cleared and he was not feeling good about dirty ice that is still resided on the bank of darchan's small streams he had been facing communication problems since satan left no one knew much english to answer his basic question he met norbu in a cafe which was small dark and vast with long metal stove the wall and the ceilings were twisted in multicolored plastic sheets of different colored strips it was made into a form and big shopping bags which were sold over china and in many other countries of asia and europe plastics was china's successful export along the silk route he met norbu in a cafe which was small dark and vast with long metal stove the wall and the ceilings the cafe had only one window which he would take so that he could see his notebook clearly and he would also bring a novel with him to pass time Norbu once saw his book and asked if he could sit opposite him at his unstable table. He asked him if he is English. After he ordered tea, he told him that he was English. The protagonist guessed that he must not be a local as he was wearing a wind cheater and metal rimmed spectacles. which were in western style norbu was a tibetan who worked in beijing at the chinese academy of social sciences in the institute of ethnic literature norbu told him that he had come for come here to do kora the protagonist was happy norbu was writing academic papers on kalas kora and its importance in various buddhist literature work he had never done the kora himself norbu was excited when he got to know why the protagonist was at darchen he said they could be a team who are two academists who escaped from the library the protagonist believed his positive thinking strategy was working Norbu was also staying at a guest house just like him and Norbu was as ill equipped like him Norbu kept telling him that he was too dull boring and tired to walk and he was fat Norbu was not a practicing buddhist but he was an enthusiast originally the protagonist predicted that the trick would be good in a company of any deep believer but he found norbu to be an ideal partner they decided to hire some yaks to carry their luggage and he had no intention of lying down flat all over the mountain norbu finally said it is not possible for him while he collapsed across the table laughing hilariously his tummy was also too big So here we come to the end of this chapter thank you